Uh, thanks for the introduction, Dr. Salcedo. My name is Tyler Johnson, and I'm going to be talking to you guys today about my capstone project, Developing and Printing 3D Printed Hearts for Graduate Level Ultrasound Training. This research was performed at the University of Colorado Anschutz Medical Campus. Uh, before we start, I'd like to thank my team that was involved in helping me complete this project. Uh, my mentor, Dr. Loman Bonfiglio, my chair, Dr. Orr, and then my other two committee members, Corey bunting Britton and Monica Whitting. I'd also like to take the time to thank Modern Human Anatomy Program and the InWorks Innovation Initiative for providing me with the resources in order to complete the project. Lastly, I'd like to thank Noah Lepic for his Maya 2020 help and my capstone instructor, Dr. Ernie Salcedo. I'd like to talk a little about ultrasound first. Um, physicians are starting to use ultrasound imaging a lot more now due to its lack of ionizing radiation. And thus, graduate and medical programs are starting to increasingly integrate ultrasound into their curriculum. Up here in the top right image, you can see the CU School of Medicine. They have four phases of ultrasound built into their medical school student curriculum. But they're finding that students are actually struggling with these non-standard ultrasound planes of the heart, such as the parasternal long axis, also known as PLAX, or the parasternal short axis, also known as PSAX. Currently, the only resources available are 2D pictures, like in the bottom right corner of the PLAX and PSAX views, or PLAX and PSAX plastinated hearts. These plastinated specimens actually show quite a bit of potential as a resource, but they're coming with their own set of ethical and financial concerns. They're very expensive to reproduce, and ethically, they're real human tissue, so they require special care and storage. We found that Fused deposition modeling, or FDM 3D printers, are becoming so widely available that they're actually going to provide us with a unique opportunity to recreate any scannable object. So with that, our hypothesis was to develop 3D printed models in the parasternal long axis and the parasternal short axis that could replace current plastinated specimens without those same associated issues. So how do we do it? The modern human anatomy's plastinate collection of the PSAX and PLAX hearts were on display in our suite. And so we used those compared with our Arctic Space Fighter scanner on a turntable. While spinning this and scanning using that, we would also flip it in multiple views to get enough data to then put into our Arctic Studio 13 professional software to produce a digital file. Once we had that digital file, we could then put it in our slicing software, for instance, Kira for our Lowell's bot printers, and we could adjust the material, the level of detail, the infill percentage. Um, we could generate our supports that are needed, and we could see how long this print would take. Right here, you can see that this print would take about 23 hours, and that was actually probably about in the middle of our time frame, as we had some prints take about seven hours, others take up to 72 hours. But either way, once we're able to get that file, we convert it to a G code, we could then plug it into the SD card, and plug that into our Lulzbot TAS6 printer, as seen here in Dr. Orr's lab, or the Ultimaker S3 that is in the in the Innovation Initiative suite in the library. We use this polylactic acid filament, or PLA, because it was widely available, it's relatively cheap, and it comes in many colors that we could try out. Once we're able to print those models successfully, as you see here in the first and third rows, we were wanting to compare them with the plastinated hearts as seen in the second and fourth rows. We're actually very impressed with how well they actually turned out, but there's still the potential for some anatomical artifacts. And so we wanted to actually compare them directly to see what needed to be fixed since these are digital files now. If we did find something, for instance, a hole in the model, we would then go into our Maya 2020 software and we would actually find the hole, plug it with polygon and then smooth it over so that it was never there. Overall, we found that those models were able to be printed very successfully using the widely available FDM printers, and that students now have a cheaper, more durable replica of the plastinated specimen. Um, we were considering open source file sharing that would allow any school or print or hospital with a 3D printer to actually then produce these realistic anatomical models. Our future steps is to actually reprint those now digitally modified models and then go about using our IRB approved protocol that is allowing us to compare directly against plastinated specimens 
based on the educational outcomes of a pre and post survey as seen in the bottom right. At the same time, we'd also like to see how do students feel about using these models or what perceptions they have of using 3D printed models. And so we'd like to publish that data as well. In the future, we'd like to try to cut fresh cadaver carts in other cardiac ultrasound views and attempt to scan those and print those in order to eliminate that middle step of having the expensive plastinated uh, print first. Does anyone have any questions? Wonderful, thank you, Tyler. <clears throat> okay, so yes, if you have questions, please submit them in the chat box. Um, Tyler, I do have a question. So it, it sounds like there were a lot of um, steps in that process. So uh, how do you suggest uh, kind of like streamlining this process or making it available to others easily? I think that's our, our best step is with trying to cut out the plastinated specimen. Um, if we can cut that out, then we could just scan the hearts directly. Uh, and if we could scan the hearts directly, it would eliminate the need for the plastination process. Uh, also, digitally modifying the models is a great step to make the models more anatomically accurate. But most of the models only needed one or two small two to three millimeter size holes patched. And in that case, I think the students would be able to bypass that in order to use it for ultrasound. Um, and we had a, another question about the resolution of the models. Could you tell us about that real quick? Uh, resolution as in how anatomically accurate they were compared to the plasmid? Um, I don't more... have the specifics. <laughs> from. Uh, yes, they said yes. Yeah. So, um, Research has actually shown that the 3D printed models were able to be produced with less than 1% anatomical difference for structures under 10 millimeters. Uh, so we were able to recreate that as well. The printers actually can't replicate how well the scans are. And so the most detail we could get was a 0 0.06 millimeter line height. If we were able to actually get into even lower, we could get into polyjet printing and other different types of printing that would allow us to re reproduce uh, even smaller anatomical structures. But for now, we're kind of limited on how detailed the printers can actually print. Okay, thank you. Uh, that's all the time we have for questions for Tyler. Thank you again for your presentation.